Welcome everybody to Next Edition Studios in Malmo here again. Um, we wanted to broaden the scope a little bit and we wanted to have a little chat with some industry experts. So we've lined up uh, Malcolm Robinson here from Broadcast Solutions. Uh, Malcolm is an old friend of mine as well. We worked together a long time ago in the UK. So uh, welcome, Malcolm. Hi, Adam. How are you? I'm um, very well, thank you. Um, so we've been collaborating pretty much since the world changed quite radically with COVID-19. Um, how did this project start and what challenges are we trying to overcome here? Yeah, I think I think when we first started discussing things, we were looking at um, you know can it, with this sort of the idea of remote production. Um, the words we used were collaborative production. How do people work outside of the studio control rooms from their own home offices, from uh, their own locations they want to work from? And the the industry at the moment is usually done by a lot of people right, driving up and down motorways and uh, trans traveling around all the time. Can we simplify that? And one of the biggest challenges is can we do that using you know, public internet rather than dedicated fiber lines? Can we do this on the public internet? So basically to create a production environment um, from contribution through the production that enables the storytellers to really tell their story easily and comfortably in their own time. And what kind of uh, solutions do you have to try to put together to try and make that work? Well, obviously, there's a uh, the key part is the production side, which is why I was talking to you guys at Next Edition. That's really why it became forefront. I think you guys are really paving the way um, from uh, online production stuff. Um, um, but then, of course, you have to think about how do you get your, your video from A to B? How do you get stuff into the system in the first place in uh, as good a quality uh, from a picture quality point of view, but also from a, a production quality point of view? Um, how do you give the people the stuff, uh, the workplaces they're used to, you know, for camera shading guys, for um, um, EVS guys or uh, slow motion people, graphics operators, directors? They're used to a certain way of working. So how do we keep that, that actually there's no detrimental quality loss to how they work uh, and how we move forward with that. So that, that was a bit of a challenge. And um, obviously, with public internet, there's, um, there's a, a latency uh, um, challenge, I wouldn't say a problem, but challenge, um, which we think we've got some ideas of how that can, or oh, uh, we've got working solutions, how we get around that now. Um, and it's just understanding the, the, the limitations of what we're trying to do. Um, you can't change physics, so there's going to be some latency in this. Um, but it's just making sure it's, it's workable and, uh, and people can do the job as they want to do. So um, we, we've had some quite good fun moving things around using different manufacturers' equipment and stuff. <laughs> uh, we've learned a lot of lessons. I've actually got a quite a nice clip here of a bee uh, which you sent over. So uh, can yeah. you just talk us through how this B came to be on our system? This it's B-roll, as we call it. Yeah, this is the B-roll. This is a, a great example of COVID, actually. So um, um, over this period of time, I've been working for my house. This is my garden. Um, this is actually uh, the Dream Chip um, Super Slow Motion Camera SSM500. It's the first one that's really been in Europe in use. And I had it in my house. So I thought I'd better shoot some uh, shoot some footage. So this is the uh, five other frames a second. Um, and I wanted to see how it looked like um, if we streamed it to... Uh, to next, to ingest in next. So this is going down a, um, a mobile viewpoint um, um, encoder and decoder system, which we have the, the decoder sitting in Malmo um, in the next office and the encoder is from my house. This is down my internet connection. It's um, uh, a pretty standard home internet, internet connection in the UK um, using SRT streaming. That's amazing. It's so amazing. In fact, I want to put it on my video wall so I can there try and go. catch the video. <laughs> there you go. He's a happy little fella. He is a happy little fellow, yeah. yeah. To, to talk about how then we can sort of bring this to a practical standpoint. I mean, how, how will we make it so that we can eventually uh, create a production of some description? Yeah, we had to take into consideration all these elements, isn't it? There's, it's, um, you know, one element is, is the actual play out of a channel where you've got pre-recorded material and you're playing back um, AB roll, all that sort of stuff, which Next does brilliantly. How do you take that into the next step where you start actually doing live production with, um, you know, guys are used to sitting in front of a vision mixer. They're used to having all their production team around them. They, they shout at the EBS guys. If you break it down and you start looking at actually when you build an AB truck or a studio control room, they're, they're like workstations. They're people in their space. They all usually got comms involved, so they're talking to each other via headsets, via this sort of stuff. So if you break that down and say, actually, if that person isn't in the room next door, but actually he's at his office on a headset, he can hear you, okay, then what's the difference? As long as they can still see what they're trying to do, they've still got the control of the stuff, they've still got enough um, uh, operational facilities around them, then why can't it work? And I think we've proven that now that... Um, 
you know, by using um, um, various types of streaming, RTMP, SRT, um, looking at NDI, all this sort of stuff, the latency issue kind of um, is surmountable. Um, you may have to think about using uh, faster streams and not going through the production system to get video, video feeds to the camera shading guys. But as long as they can see them and it's a good quality and they can rack the cameras, then that works. And we've proven that works. And we've actually had people remotely um, racking cameras on an internet call, um, uh, connection to the camera itself um, whilst seeing the direct stream output from the cameras whilst the main feed is going down a slightly different route into the production. That works really well. No issue no, and that's something actually that's quite interesting that the concept of being able to rack and see what you're racking coming back. Oh, completely. You know, it's um, and it's where it's it's how you work that. You know, and it depends on which which manufacturer, as as we've found out, depends which manufacturer you're using. Some pros and cons, for different things, um, and that's just improving all the time. You know, this um, certain guys have now got live multi viewers coming straight out the streaming systems. Um, it depends where you start to look at the picture, where the source is coming from, and how that works. Um, it also depends a lot on your links. You know, um, this is a a network from a house, an internet from a house. Um, some of the grounds have internet connections, some don't. So, do you put a bonded system? System in, you know, um, so you make take advantage of the uh, mobile networks around the, the area as well, um, and it's just looking at how uh, having uh, SRT or NDI or that sort of streaming encoding packages that are around H.264 and HVC, um, it works down a small bandwidth, and we're seeing that actually picture quality and quality of service is pretty good uh, on the systems. Um, still a bit early days, but you know we we're starting to do some real testing on this. We're seeing it really working well. Um, so that contribution fee is really important. Um, we've, um, we've also been looking just a little bit away from the next edition stuff. We've also been looking at actually contribution fees from that and, and working with a mobile viewpoint sports producer system. So how can the, um, I mean, streaming very much hits that um, second tier, third tier uh, federation kind of thing, sports. So how can we actually improve the coverage there? You know, um, so Mobile Viewpoint have a sports producer system, which is basically an AI-driven um, um, sports production system, <laughs> strange enough. Um, and we have a bit of footage here that we streamed from as live. It wasn't live. It's was recorded and streamed as live down a, a link, a, a stream linked into the system. Um, and you can see the, the pitch quality is uh, very good coverage. You can also, this is, this is, there's no cameraman involved in it. <laughs> no cameraman were hurt in this, uh, in the production, this, making this production. <laughs> um, and you can see actually that the, the, the whole thing is is pretty good it's starting to to take shape and i think that's a, another bit is how do we optimize a lot of the techniques people are doing now um, and and make these things available um and it's not always to replace um existing stuff so we're not trying to replace ob trucks here as such we're trying to enable um i don't want to say the word cheaper that's not what i'm talking about more cost effective um production to to enable them to cover the games you know this could also be um um um, you know, uh, youth games, uh, the ladies' um, um, football stuff, all that sort of stuff can take place. And um, so it really helps us to um, to enhance the coverage. So that, that's the contribution fee. That's the area that we've really looked at um, in the last few months is how do we make uh, a, a live production sourced feed um, in the studio and working with you guys to get your shop boxes working properly and how that goes and how it would work. Because one of the biggest challenges we face is about people and change. And, um, you know, it's it's getting people to do things slightly differently. And some people are really up for it. And some people are like, oh, well, I need my control room. I've got a control panel here. And they, well, you don't necessarily need that anymore. We've proven now that we can actually make, um, you know, sports, news, documentaries, whatever you want to do, um, chat shows, all that sort of stuff can be shot through these systems um, where people potentially uh, are not in control rooms and we're doing it from our offices like this and at home. So That's fantastic. Um, yeah, it's been an interesting journey, I think, for, for both of us through this uh, this thing. We've learned quite a lot. Um, a, lot of late night, a lot of late night calls and chats. A lot of late chats. night calls and chats and things. Um, but, I mean, we, we have managed to get together a, a system whereby we can contribute uh, over public internet, uh, real video feeds in real time, live, and we can put graphics on. We can uh, also start now to look at uh, replay devices, how we can bring those into the mix. But what we're doing is leaving the heavy lifting on the ground. So we st we're using private cloud here at our base in Malmo to, to move the video around. We're sending just packets of data to control the vision mixes, the audio, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a different way of looking at, at how we can actually produce uh, content uh, much easier from lo remote locations.
I think this is this is this is like you know you hear a lot about cloud based productions and uh, we get that. I understand there's a there's a I don't want to say fad it's the wrong word but everyone's talking about cloud based stuff but you've got to get stuff in and out of the cloud they cost money they cost bandwidth they cost time um, this is a slightly different context you know the keep it simple you know we we know that HDSDI works in the real world and it can work between you know routers and what have we got here is our proof of concept system it's a little router it's a vision mixer it's a graphics and some playback stuff and and some decoders with contribution feeds it works you know it's um it's not your full twenty one ten IP installation it could be we could easily put it into that it's um what we've been looking at really is more the the operational side and how that can work for people um and and is you know you hear the phrase it's good enough um we want to be slightly better than good enough we want to make sure that there's <laughs> yeah. a quality thing there um, and i think there's a lot of challenges there it's, it's it's you know we challenge ourselves straight away it's, i don't just want to do remote production i want to do it on the internet you know, I don't want to go and spend thousands with a, a network provider to um, to give me a a, a, a ten gig line, forty gig line into a house. It ain't practical. It ain't gonna work. And also, it isn't flexible. We've got to make sure this what we're trying to build here can be done by a lot of people. And I think we've proven when we've had three or four people working from home that actually the internet is good enough. Um, I think you said the other day that you know it's there's a point where if you can see Netflix, you can probably make the system work. And I think we're not yeah. far off that. You know, maybe it's a bit of an elaboration marketing term, but but we're not far <laughs> off it. I don't think so. No, but I think I think you know we've measured that and we've we've tried that and it, and it, it it's pretty much the case when you're actually doing the production end of things. Obviously, when we're moving the signals around, then we're, then we're relying on uh, you know, uh, third-party manufacturers to move that stuff into our system. Mm. Once our system, you know, it, it's a lot of our customers just went home and yeah. then plugged in via a VPN <laughs> yeah, because we're built like yeah. that. But we're built for the internet, and, um, and that's the reason. I and I think that's that's one of the real benefits I've seen of working with you guys is that um, you're built on the same technology that the... The world is moving towards, you know, the internet technology, the stuff that Google are using, the stuff that, that uh, Microsoft, all those guys are using. You're, you're using that that hardware and software straight away. So, um, when when the when we make some progress on, you know, things like SRT streaming, it fits in very quickly in your system. Not an issue at all. Very simple to make work. Mm -hmm. um, and I think also that benefit that we've talked about contribution streaming there, which I think is very important, obviously very important. But also there's that bit about getting the stuff out to people fast. You know, yeah. the, the, the way, and I think something in the demos we've showed to people, the fact that you can take a, a clip of a bee or something, and it can be literally online within a matter of seconds, not tens of seconds, but seconds. Um, and that can also be a workflow. You, know, you put the right metadata in, boom, you don't even think about it. It's gone to YouTube, Twitter, whatever it might be. And that whole um, fast and first principle, which you guys have pushed and pushed and pushed, mm -hmm. really makes sense to me. So we, you know, we talk to the likes of uh, CNN and those sort of guys. That's really important for them. And even for the football clubs, you know, to, to be able um, – you know, your fan watching Crawley Town to see his goal that he's just seen on the on the pitch, to really see it on his phone within a matter of seconds rather than minutes or hours is that's what it's all about these days because people are used to getting it boom, boom, boom. So get it there, good quality, um, and 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 you know, that that whole production quality with a bit of graphics, a bit of commentary, blah blah blah, all this sort of stuff around it, mm -hmm. that is a big difference to people. There's a professionalism brought into it. So there's some stuff in the future. Uh, restreaming stuff and sending stuff. I've got a fly of my own here. <laughs> restreaming stuff um, uh, to multiple destinations at the same time, you know, and, and looking after second screen, you know, how do we look after second screen fast? Absolutely. And also yeah, we, we... making a sidecar of metadata, you know, can we send metadata with a clean feed so that the devices can render the, the, the graphics? But the, the, the thing about that is, first of all, you, you must have the content first in a, in a format with all of that metadata attached to it live. So making a clip for YouTube it's pretty simple. Making a live stream for YouTube is very complicated, as we all know, because making live television is actually a very complicated process. Yeah, it's not. It is, um, but we're not reinventing the wheel here, are we? When this is the beauty of this, we're not trying to make it more difficult for the end user. We're trying to make it easier and simpler. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if a guy can sit literally turn up, I can turn up here in my house with a, a solution in front of me that I can actually make TV programs, which we've done in demos. You know, I've taken over from your stuff and it mm -hmm. makes people always laugh when I take over your demo from you. <laughs> but it just goes to show that we're sitting 
hundreds of miles apart from each other on the end of an internet connection and we can make it work. So there's the, the tec technical side of stuff is really working there, as you can see. And, and I think it's just going to get better and better, really. And, and there's more applications that we're finding on a, you know, a daily basis, really, to honest you. Um, you know, people are used to seeing videos and, and with the, the, the situation now with coronavirus and people can't go on site, people can't go to shoot their commercials, they can't go to shoot their nature photography. They can't even uh, go into a studio and, and shoot a panel show, you know? Absolutely. But you know what? If they've got the right tech and they can take a, an encoder and they've got an internet connection mm -hmm. or a mobile phone connection, then you can get that video back to people and yeah, they can yeah. start seeing it, you know, and that streaming part of it. I mean, not so much yeah. for the, uh, we're talking about live production here more, but, but just bring streaming into the real world um, and and um, and I've been quite you know we've gone into a lot of depth at the streaming all the technology side of it behind it mm. and actually when you strip it back um, it is quite simple once you get to understand how it works um, and it's usually something stupid that you know it's usually something I put the wrong wrong value with a code very or something. normal <laughs> yeah and, and you know but you learn you learn you learn yeah, and that's do. you know I think I'm I'm of an age where I'm a traditional broadcast person and I know it very very well mm. um, and it's been an interesting journey for me to to get into that whole world and I've met some really nice people on the way you know they're, they're helpful um, they even give me time and get me and drag me into the, to the modern world which is great but uh, but I think there's that, that I think what um, the whole thing we've been trying to do is is keep our feet on the ground it's it's great having all the tech but a what does it cost what's the real implications of it and why you know i think one thing we've really tried to keep away from is not just tech for tech's sake you know yes. there's no gimmicks in this this is actually this makes this is what you make it work it's how you make it work this is what I you mean, do to make it work so. we fundamentally tried to make television uh, in a normal way but by doing it in this you know radically uh, distanced way so yeah, and, and it absolutely. works that's yeah. the, that's been the interesting thing for me it actually works yeah i mean i think that's that's a bit of an interesting conversation with the two of us isn't it is yeah. why are we doing this exactly <laughs> well they can do it this way no that's not how they normally do it yeah we can, they can, people can learn that later on let's just give them what they've got now in a better way of a, a better environment and able them to do it remotely and able to do it collaboratively then we can start growing on the new, new ideas you know it's um yes. you, know, you know vision mixes with kias and uh, and emmy banks are a thing of the past now we know that mm -hmm. um so you know layered graphics understanding that you know it's a different concept for a lot of people is you know i haven't got my emmy one emmy two emmy three emmy four Thanks to I'm just gonna press this button, I get a layer yeah, come and up. You Great. get everything come up. Mm. This is quite radical at first glance, but uh, actually when you start to use it, it's more how it should be than how it has been done. It's been we've got a lot of technology now to simplify the process. Yeah, and that's what's interesting. You know, I've got I've got two teenage boys and I was talking them through one of these uh, demos and just showing them the stuff we're up to. And they're thinking, Yeah, why wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. you know, they um they zoom their mates. They can see video pictures. They they watch their their sports events at, at school online because they can log in and get stuff. Why wouldn't they want to see it live? Why can't they yeah. see it live? You know they don't watch TV anymore. They watch everything on their phones and their iPads. And you know that's and when they want to watch it, you know, and, and actually they want to watch. What I've really found is they want to watch not just the big games. They want to watch their mates playing, and they want to watch you know the smaller stuff. Their the, the under 18s team playing, and they can't yeah. watch that live at the moment. Yeah, so and there's a lot yeah. of that minority stuff that's starting to bubble up as, oh, as potential. Yeah. yeah, and that's where I think the market. You know, the that's where the market we need to try and open up a bit more is trying to bring the the quality of a full broadcast channel and the, the 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 workflow and the respect that people have of how that works into a more um uh a, a larger marketplace that could be done simply and easily and get the same results. And I think some of the demos we've done where we've, you know, within 10 minutes, you're producing the same output on a system that is pretty simple to use and, and all online mm. out on the internet as such, um, faster than the guys have done in a full broadcast studio. Mm. You know, I think that's, that's a real telling thing actually. And then they're like, Oh wow, that's, that's quick. That's really good. It's like, yeah, that's how you can do it. With a bit of planning, a bit of templating, a bit of thinking about this, um, it's all possible to do. And probably you're probably going to get better output, but you know, saying that the things are getting better and quicker and, um, and more effective. So yeah, it's been a really interesting journey and yeah, it has been, yeah. it's just trying to make sure we don't uh, close any doors. So Open-mindedness, that's the answer. Exactly. Really. Yeah, exactly. Well, I won't take any more of your cool. time. Thanks for joining us, no, Malcolm. No problem at all. Good. Hope to see you very soon. Pleasure as always talking Stay to you. Stay safe. And uh, see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.